Hi friends, welcome back to the English Vocabulary Help Podcast. My name is Kayla. I'm an American English teacher from here in the United States. And in each episode of the English Vocabulary Help Podcast, I choose a topic and I give you natural English vocabulary. And the podcast is pretty much unscripted. Today's topic that I have chosen is restaurants. Last week's episode was all about different diets. And a diet is the type of food that you eat. And I just enjoyed talking about food so much that I thought we'd talk about restaurants this week. So let's get into today's episode. So in last week's episode, we talked about different diet vocabulary. And at the end of the podcast episode, I was talking about my guilty pleasures. And when I was talking about guilty pleasure... A guilty pleasure is something that you feel guilty and you feel bad about because you know it's not good for you or it's not healthy for you. For instance, for some people, smoking is a guilty pleasure or drinking alcohol is a guilty pleasure. For me, I would say food can be a guilty pleasure, but I just enjoy it so much that even though I feel guilty when I eat the unhealthy food, it's a pleasure and life is about enjoying things. So every once in a while, it's okay as long as I eat healthy most of the time. And I would say in the United States, we have so many really good restaurants and fast food options that if you are not enjoying eating out by eating out, I mean getting takeout or going to eat at a restaurant, then I think you're really missing out. I think that you are not going to be able to experience some of the really good things that this country has to offer. So in today's episode, I'm going to talk about the different types of restaurants we have, some vocabulary that might help you when choosing a restaurant, and then I'm going to also talk about my favorite restaurants because I just love talking about restaurants and I love talking about food. So let's get started. First, I want to talk about fast food. So if you don't already know what fast food means, fast food would be like McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Arby's, Chick-fil-A, which Chick-fil-A is my favorite fast food restaurant. It's basically food that you can order and it'll be ready within 5 to 10 minutes at the most. In the United States, almost all of our fast food restaurants have a drive through option. This means you don't have to get out of your car, you drive up to a speaker and you order off the menu. And then instead of getting out of your car, you just drive up to a window and you pay and they hand you the food. So as you guys know, I am a mom of two young children. So for me, not having to get out of the car, not having to take the kids into a restaurant is very convenient. It's very nice. And that's the problem with the United States is our unhealthy food is so convenient that it's hard to pass up. And by pass up, I mean it's hard to deny yourself the convenience of going there. So my favorite fast food right now, and it changes from time to time, is Chick-fil-A. I really like chicken, and I love a crispy chicken sandwich. Usually when we say crispy in the United States, it means it's fried. So it's like a fried chicken sandwich. And at Chick-fil-A, they have their own type of sauce. It's called Chick-fil-A sauce. And when I go there, I always ask for an extra sauce, and I save it at home because if I eat chicken at home, I will also use their sauce. It's so good. And it's like a mayonnaise mixed with barbecue and ketchup, kind of. It's delicious. And I know Americans really like mayonnaise. We put mayonnaise on a lot of things, which I think is embarrassing because mayonnaise is just like a fatty oil sauce that we use. It's not healthy. I also love at Chick-fil-A they have waffle fries. These are fries that are potatoes shaped like a waffle. They have little holes in them. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go ahead and Google waffle fries. They are delicious with some ketchup or some Chick-fil-A sauce. And then at any fast food restaurant, if I'm feeling like I want to treat myself, I want to indulge in something sweet. I want to reward myself. I get a chocolate shake. And at Chick-fil-A, I usually get a chocolate shake or they have an Oreo shake, which is often referred to as cookies and cream, Oreo cookies in the ice cream. And it's delicious. It's so unhealthy. But again, fast food is my guilty pleasure. 
In the United States, many different regions have different fast foods, but for the most part, Chick-fil-A, Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's, I'm probably forgetting some, Arby's, they all can be found all over the United States. Now, there is a fast food battle in the United States. There's actually a couple that I'll talk about on the podcast today. I hope that you find these interesting. So first of all, there is the chicken sandwich war. And this is dramatically named because many different restaurants have a chicken sandwich that they like to claim is the best fast food chicken sandwich. I think the chicken sandwich wars started between Popeyes and Chick-fil-A. And both of these restaurants are known for their chicken. And so people were saying uh, that Chick-fil-A was their favorite. And some people were saying that Popeyes was their favorite. Me and my husband, we do think Popeyes is a little better, but... Every time we go there, we get a messed up order and we get bad service. So we don't like to spend our money there because they never get our order right. They always charge us for the wrong thing or they don't give us the food that we ordered. And we got so frustrated that we put them on our list. Now, this is not, you know, a general known term, but me and my husband have a list of food places that we will not visit because we've either had a bad experience there or they've messed up our order many, many times. And once they're on the list, we don't go there for a long time. If the food's really good, maybe we'll let like six months to a year pass and then we'll visit that restaurant again. And if they do good, then they're off the list. We can go there to eat food and we'll spend our money there. But if they mess up again, they're back on the list. And this is just a funny thing that me and my husband say. I wonder if you guys have a list of restaurants that you will not visit because of a certain reason. Let me know in my messages or email me about it. I would love to hear about it. It's kind of funny. So fast food is going to be the cheapest food that you get. On the West Coast, the best fast food place, so this would be like California, Oregon, Washington State, um, I think Nevada has these two, Utah, and I think maybe there's a few of these in Texas. They have a fast food restaurant called In and Out Burger, and I've talked about this once on the podcast. I only get to go to In and Out Burger if I'm visiting somewhere on the West Coast, which I don't have family there, so I have to take a trip out there to do it. It is so delicious. It's the freshest fast food that you can get. It's just burgers and cheeseburgers and really fresh french fries that they cut the potatoes in the restaurant instead of, you know, they usually come frozen to the restaurant and then they fry them. It's very simple, but it's very delicious, and it's my favorite. There's a different burger fast food restaurant on the east coast of the United States. I'm talking New York and New Jersey. I'm not sure what other states it's in, and This fast food place is expanding. Now we have them a little bit in the Midwest. It's called Shake Shack. Now Shake Shack literally started as a shack or a small house that was a restaurant in the middle of New York City. And the burgers and the shakes, as it's named for, are so good that it expanded really rapidly. Shake Shack burgers are much different than In-N-Out burgers. And it's kind of a battle between which one you like more in the United States. If you are from the West Coast, you usually say in and out And if you're from the East Coast, you usually talk about Shake Shack. Personally, I've had both. I've had In-N-Out Burger in California, and I've had Shake Shack in New York City. And I have to say that I liked In-N-Out Burger just a little bit more, but they are both delicious. Fast food is the cheapest food that you can get. But just a small step up from fast food is fast casual restaurants. Now, fast casual restaurants, we don't use this term a lot, but just as a category, it would be things that you order and it might take a little bit longer, like 10 minutes to get, but there's not a waiter or a waitress at the restaurant to bring you the food. You just walk up to a counter and then you sit down and they usually bring you your food, but they don't ask you if you want like more things to drink, and it's not a huge experience like going out to a more fancy restaurant. So fast casual foods in the United States include Chipotle. Chipotle is like white people Mexican food, if I'm being honest. It's very good, but it's like a burrito. 
or you can get your burrito bowl, which is like a salad with burrito toppings. Um, there's one called Noodles and Company. It has nothing to do with Italian food, really. It's You can get like mac and cheese, different pasta dishes, and fast casual foods are good. You know, they tend to be a bit healthier than fast food. We could also call fast casual restaurants takeout restaurants, restaurants that are designed to either take the food home or you can take the food anywhere. You don't have to sit in a designated spot and there's typically not a drive through for fast casual restaurants. So the next step up from a fast casual restaurant is a chain restaurant. And a chain restaurant means that instead of just one restaurant existing, there are hundreds, if not a thousand of them in the United States. So the main examples I think of are Applebee's, which Applebee's food is very salty. I'll just say that. There's not a very experienced or well-trained chef making the food. And the food is a lot of fried things or you can get a steak, you know, a big piece of meat, but it won't be very good. And if you go to Applebee's, let's say in New York, or if you go to Applebee's in Florida, or if you go to Applebee's in California, it will all taste the same. It will be very consistent and you know what you're getting from the restaurant. Another chain restaurant that I actually really like is called Chili's, like a chili pepper. And it's supposed to be Tex-Mex food, I believe. So they have things like quesadillas, um, tacos, but they also have burgers and nachos, mozzarella sticks. Both of these restaurants also have a bar within the restaurant, so you can get alcohol there as well. Chain restaurants can be good because you know exactly what you're getting, but they can also be bad because it's not a high quality product. It's pretty much the middle of eating out as far as quality goes. And as far as price goes, chain restaurants are not cheap. Let's say you go out to dinner with a family of four and everyone orders one thing, maybe um, a big entree, which is like the main dish of food. You order one appetizer and four people get drinks. It will be $100, I would say, for four people to eat at a chain restaurant. Maybe a bit less depending on what you order. Along with chain restaurants, there are family restaurants. This is short for family-owned restaurants. So family-owned restaurants, usually there's just one. The family does not own, you know, let's say the family's name is Johnson, their last name. And they own a restaurant called Johnson's Steakhouse, where they serve steak, of course. They probably don't own five Johnson Steakhouses. Maybe they own one of those restaurants, maybe two three at the most. That's what I would consider a family-owned restaurant. And they'll be similar in price to a chain restaurant, but the product might change a little bit depending on who's cooking that night, just because it's a family that owns the restaurant rather than a big corporation. Within family restaurants and within all of these categories, we have certain restaurants that we de designate as Americans, as ethnic food. Ethnic food, to me, it sounds like it would be a offensive term, but it's really just short for ethnicity food. So we have commonly Chinese food in the United States, which I'm told Chinese food in the United States tastes nothing like the food in China, so forgive us for that. Italian food, which would be like pasta or pizza, is something that we would classify as Italian. Thai food is very popular. Indian food is my favorite ethnic food, but I have to say I'm kind of boring. I get chicken tikka masala. <laughs> I think it's also called butter chicken a lot of places. Um, I like to get it really spicy with the curry powder. And then if me and my husband get Indian food, we also get naan and usually, usually we'll get maybe one other thing. Um, I don't know, if you are Indian and you have any recommendations of American Indian food that I should get, also email me or message me with it. I would love to hear it. I would love to visit India someday just to experience the food, honestly, because I just love the spices and I love the textures and the flavors and 
I love the creativity with vegetables and different types of meats than what we typically have in the United States, like Indian food at Indian restaurants here in the United States at least. They have lots of lamb dishes that I really like. And they also have lots of vegetarian dishes. Um, Mexican food is super common as well in the United States because there are so many people from Mexico here that they have shared their food with us. And I love Mexican food personally because, again, I'm kind of a spicy food person and I enjoy the spices and I enjoy the taste. Another spicy food that I've enjoyed, not a lot because I don't know a lot of good Korean restaurants, but I, the few that I've tried, I've really enjoyed Korean restaurants. So those are just kind of our typical ethnicity, ethnic foods in the United States. Um, I saw a really funny TikTok the other day that was an American living in Japan, and they went to an American restaurant, which as an American is such a strange concept for me. And they had like tacky American posters on the wall. One said, work hard, play hard, as if that's something Americans say a lot. There was an American flag, I think a baseball. It was just a really funny concept. And I'm sure the restaurant had maybe burgers and fries. Because <laughs> I suppose that's what we eat as Americans. Finally, we have fine dining restaurants. And honestly, I have not been to many fine dining restaurants in my lifetime. They're very expensive, maybe, oh gosh, maybe up to $100 for just one person's meal. And typically you have to dress nicer and, you know, they offer really good service at the restaurant. To me, I don't like to go out to a fancy restaurant because... I'm loud and <laughs> I'm not super polite. I'm not rude, but I, it just feels like a lot of pressure to go to a fancy restaurant. And in the United States, fancy restaurants usually serve seafood and steak. So usually in the United States, a fancy restaurant, which is a restaurant that costs lots of money and is just a high-class environment, meaning you need to be on your best behavior, you need to use your manners, you need to dress nice. They usually serve either steak or seafood and they have white tablecloths and it's an experience going out to a fancy restaurant or steakhouse in the United States. Thanks again for listening to the English Vocabulary Help Podcast. You can follow me on Instagram at English with Kayla and make sure to check out the YouTube channel as well by searching English with Kayla or using the links in this episode. I'll be back next Thursday with a new podcast episode and best of luck studying to you.